The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you Jennifer Luddington, and she's one of my dear friends, and she is absolutely amazing. So you guys are in for an absolute treat. And today we're answering the question, why am I not losing weight? What are my blind spots? I hear people all the time, they're emailing questions in and they're like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, but I'm not losing weight. And so we hear your frustrations. And so today's all the reasons why you could not be losing weight and what's hitting that spot that it's just not working. So Jennifer, welcome. Tell listeners a little bit about yourself. Hey, yeah. Thanks, Chantal. I really appreciate you having me. I love being here with you. So thank you. Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward, right? Like I've been in the fitness and health industry for 15 years now. I can't believe it. Um, But I I come from a background of not only bodybuilding and fitness competing, um, but I own my own gyms, my own protein bar company. Um, and I've been coaching women for that long. So it's it's really been a great journey for me to discover the benefits of fasting for myself and my clients. Um, and so I think it's a really powerful tool. And that's why I'm really excited to talk more about it today. So tell us a little bit about you. Like what yeah. what do you do on a regular basis? And try to be like, like give us a typical week of, you know, what is your eating window? When do you eat? about how much do you eat? What are some of the things you try to avoid? Yeah, thank you. You know, I try not to be dogmatic in my approach to nutrition. What I am dogmatic in is the timing of my nutrition. So I truly believe that we can solve a lot of problems by allowing our digestive system to rest and our metabolism to reset and our, you know, mucosal lining of our gut to reset and have a break. And so I do believe in daily intermittent fasting. And sometimes Chantel, you know, depending on my activity level, I will eat at 11 a.m. and then at 5 p.m. And and during the day, I tend to do better if I have a few snacks. Um, So it's typically my day. Now there are some variations like tonight, for example, um, I'm going to dinner with my husband late. So I'll have a later um, eating window. So that means tomorrow morning, I'll push my, you know, first meal likely to to one o'clock or so. Um, So typically my window, you know, is I eat about, you know, it's a seven to eight hour window max. And um, that's what works best for me. Now I do have clients that can go a lot shorter windows and have clients that can go a lot longer windows, but still, I always recommend at least a good 12 hour window. Okay, great. So let's talk about kind of the top five reasons of why you're seeing people not lose weight. So let's just say they're eating. I would say the majority of our women are eating in a eight hour window, some in a six hour window. So let's just pretend like someone's saying, look, I am eating in a six hour window. Maybe they're eating from 12 to six Mm -hmm. and they're saying, but you know, maybe I've lost, you know, 20 pounds. I've lost 30 pounds. I still have another 30 pounds to go and I'm not losing that weight. Mm -hmm. Give me a couple of reasons what you're seeing in people. Yeah. I think that there's, it can go one of two ways. Um, But I first want to start with food intake. Right. So there's a real there's a situation that happens with women when their ther- their metabolic thermostat gets plummeted. And that can happen by not consuming enough calories during that window. And what happens is your metabolism actually down regulates. Right. So it actually slows down because, again, we're we're human beings that our, our systems are smart, Chantal. Right. Like. <laughs> They're brilliant. So if you're down regulating your food intake and your body says, wow, I I don't know if I'm going to get enough. I'm going to reserve. I'm going to reserve because I'm not quite sure if I'm going to get enough the next day. So your body regulates itself and in this case can down regulate itself. So what I recommend when I notice women are on um, kind of this this task to lose weight, sometimes they, they underdo their calories and they're not getting enough. So in that situation, I actually take a good hard look at what they're eating, calculate out their macros and calories. And then I would say to them, look, let's, let's kind of feed you. Let's have a little, maybe, maybe you want to go out and have a little extra and have a big cheat meal, right? To kind of reestablish that metabolic thermostat. So that's one reason that women could be having, you know, might, might not be understanding why they're not losing weight and be having a plateau. 
The flip side of that, however, Chantel is, um, you know, being in that fasting window, sometimes you allow yourself to get too hungry and then you overeat. Right. So on the, on the converse side, and I would say the majority of those people are that, and they're, they're in denial of how much they truly are eating. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the key. You've got to track because you can't change what you don't track. Let's be really clear here. So if you're not losing weight and it's been consistently for a couple of weeks and you know you're not under eating, right? You know you're not under eating and you probably are unaware of how many calories you're actually eating. My number one tip for women is to track it. Now don't get obsessed, but track it. Get a little food app out. I use my fitness pal, Chantel. I don't know if you've ever used that, but it's a great tool because you can actually track what you're eating so that you understand what's going into your body, not only what you're eating, but what you're drinking. So, so that's the first kind of area is food consumption, lack of, or too much. Um, another thing that I'm sure a lot of your, your audience right now is like, Hey, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything right, but they might not be drinking enough water. They might not be having enough electrolytes in their water and they might not be aware that they need when you're fasting, you need a lot more water, right? Because your body is flushing things a lot faster than normal and flushing a lot of electrolytes, flushing a lot of minerals. So if you're not replacing um, that water with some electrolyte balanced water, you need to start doing that right away. So my second tip is drinking at least 80 to 100 ounces of water a day. Yeah, I'm serious, at least. (laughs) And ensuring that you're getting enough sodium, electrolytes, magnesium, potassium, things like that. And if you're unsure of it, getting a sugar-free or a zero-calorie electrolyte mix. I use a Redmond's mix. It's a really good Redmond's sea salt mix. It's really great. Um, And if you're not getting enough sodium in your diet, that's an electrolyte also, but you want to make sure you're getting a real um, mineral densely based sea salt. So that's the number two strategy is making sure you're hydrated so that you can flush some of that fat out of your system. So those are two blind spots. Um, do you want to talk about the next one? Cause there's a big one. Yeah. Well, I was going to say for me personally, I know that one of the things that has gets me to gain weight is when I'm eating too much fat and too much carbs. So like I'm, let's say I'm just loading up, I'm just eating a higher fat diet, which it's not the the higher fat diet that's making me gain weight, but it's, I'm eating too many, too many fats and too many carbs at the same time. Can you talk about that at all? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the biggest problems with women's nutrition is we don't get enough protein. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be, this is going to sound extremely um, high on the protein recommendation, but I believe that the muscle is an organ, just like your liver, your kidneys, and it's the most metabolically active organ we have. Let me repeat that. It's the most metabolically active organ we have. Okay. It can also protect you from a lot of ailments and physical ailments, right? As we get older, there's two ways to increase muscle on your body, protein and weightlifting, right? Resistance training. So women tend to go light on the protein because it's harder to get a lot of protein because a lot of women are vegan or vegetarian, right? It's hard to get a full spectrum of essential amino acids consistently. But I recommend, and this is going to get a little sciencey, Chantel, but I recommend women get at least, at least one gram of protein per ideal body weight. So let's back into that for a woman, a woman. So if you're a woman right now and you weigh 160 pounds, let's just say, and say you want to weigh 140 pounds. Okay. You want to get 140 grams of protein, essential amino acid protein per day. Okay. So, so for a lot of people that seems like a lot, but that should be your focus. Secondarily should be the fat that you're getting from the essential amino acid protein that you're ingesting. And then third is your carbohydrate. So, and carbohydrates for me are in forms of green leafy vegetables, period. Very little fruit in my, in my life. It's, it's, to me, it's something that's once in a while, it's not consistent. So those are the things I would recommend. Start with your protein and work backwards from there. Um, The thing about protein is that it can trigger what's called mTOR. mTOR is a response in your body that actually 
allows you that protein synthesis, which is important to keep muscle on your frame, which increases your metabolism. Okay. So if you don't get enough protein, that mTOR doesn't actually get triggered in your system, which will not increase that protein synthesis, which will not help you burn more fat. You know, I, I love one of the things I do is I eat too much fruit. Um, I, I just, you know, I think one of our other things of why you're not losing weight is eating too much sugar, period. It's just sugar, sugar, sugar. And including in that is fruit. And I was, uh, you know, my husband jokes me and he says, all of my friends are super, super thin. And he's like, I feel like he says that science, like for whatever reason, like, he's like, I think that I'm going to get thinner by having thinner friends, <laughs> which is not true, but it's just, it just happens to be that way that my friends are extraordinarily thin. And so with one of the girls that, and, and even to this day, you know, I'm constantly interviewing people, but one of my good friends, I was sitting next to her and I was watching her eat fruit. And I said, how much fruit have you had today? She's like, you know, I don't eat fruit that often. She's like, but when I do, she's like, I had a quarter of a banana. And she's like, I had about half a cup of blueberries, but it's like, she knew exactly how much she had. And like for that day, she had one, you know, she's like, I barely ever eat bananas, but when I do, how much is she eating? <laughs> one quarter of the banana and yeah. half a cup of blueberries. So talk about that. How often are you eating, eating fruit and how much of it are you eating? Yeah, that's a really great point. I love that you brought that up because women tend to resort to fruit first, right? When I really want to shake women up and have them resort to protein first, um, that's key. So it's really interesting because I used to be a really fat athlete. Um, not a lot of people know this about me, but before I had my daughter, I was a marathon runner and I was fat. I'm not, I, and I don't mean to put it like that way, but it's true, right? Um, I did not know about nutrition. And what I would do before I would run marathons, listen to this, Chantal, is I would have a whole banana, right? And that's a very typical thing women do. Like, I mean, it's, I hear it all the time, like eating a banana and some oatmeal for breakfast, and then I'm going out in my workout, right? Big mistake. That's your blind spot, number one. Why that's a mistake is because let me explain this to you, ladies. Your liver can only hold so much glycogen at one time. When your liver is full, the glycogen spills over as triglycerides, fatty acids, into your bloodstream. Those fatty acids attach to visceral and subcutaneous fat. Okay. So if you're running a marathon, an average woman that runs a marathon is going to burn through about 30 grams of glucose or glycogen. Guess how many are in a banana? Do you know? No, I don't know off the top of my head. 45. 45. So in an entire marathon, the average woman's going to burn about 30 to 35-ish if you're running fast, <laughs> right? Grams of glucose, carbohydrates, whatever you want to call it. Okay. But if you just ate a banana and you chugged down some Gatorade, right, to get hydrated, you basically pumped your system full of things that aren't going to serve you because you haven't even tapped into those stores after your marathon's over. So unless you're running a marathon every day, you probably shouldn't be eating a banana every day. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Now, of course, my opinion is my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. There's a lot of people that will agree and disagree with me. But for me specifically, you will not see me eating bananas. Uh, there's no fiber in them. It's pure sugar. Your body converts that into sugar right away. Um, and sugar is sugar. Your body doesn't know the difference between a Snickers bar and a banana because it breaks down the same eventually in your body. Uh, now, yes, one has more vitamins than the other, but metabolically, same, same. And, and the thing is, is that I think a banana has about 14 grams of sugar. And so she ate one quarter of a banana. Mm -hmm. And so if you do that math, that's about three and a half grams of sugar. So, um, you know, that's really not that bad, right? So like if you're eating three and a half grams of sugar, so, and then if you look at, you know, the blueberries, she's, you know, if you take a half a cup of blueberries between the two of them, she's probably having less than 10, about nine or 10 grams of sugar. And so I guess, and she's just doing that subconsciously. She's like, she's not, she wasn't like counting anything. You know, she's a thin eater. She just intuitively knows, but it seems like around that 10, less than 10 grams of sugar 
then you're not spiking your insulin so high. So then you're having these crashes. Would you say that's about like, if you're going to have something sweet, you're trying to keep it under 10 grams of sugar, or do you kind of have a a number in your mind of what you do? Well, it, it depends on someone's metabolic health. So this is a very, you know, if your insulin's already high and you run high with your glucose and you don't wear a continuous glucose monitor, then you don't know how your body responds to that sugar. Everyone's so metabolically different. So for me, I'm very metabolically flexible, right? I've trained my metabolism. I'm metabolically healthy. I don't carry excess body fat. I try not to. So I can have a little bit more and my blood sugar doesn't really shift that much because I am metabolically healthy for someone that's on the verge of diabetes or carries a higher, you know, daily glucose. That's maybe a fasting glucose of like, you know, in the hundreds, I would definitely be careful of even 10 grams of sugar because what happens is your body can convert protein through a process called gluconeogenesis, right? That if your body needs some sugar, it can convert protein to that. If it needs it, our bodies are smart. So if you're already metabolically unhealthy, right? And you know you are if you are. <laughs> you're quite aware of it. And I know you're trying to do something about it by watching this podcast. So great for you, but don't eat sugar. Don't eat fruit. Until your body can adjust and become metabolically effective at um, processing insulin correctly and regulating your own blood sugar, avoid it. Avoid it. You don't need it. So you're going to train your body to burn the fat and the subcutaneous visceral fat that's on your body instead of using the glucose as the energy first. And so that's what I teach my clients. And so if, if you're in this position right now, Chantel, is what we're talking about today is, you know, what am I doing wrong? First of all, look at the amount of sugar you're taking in, not only with maybe if it maybe for having bread once in a while or a treat once in a while, but look at the sugar in your fruit, look at the sugar in your smoothies. Look at the sugar if you're drinking alcohol. Look at the sugar in excessive root vegetables. Um, Those are all converted into sugars, right? So we want to really be careful of that. Um, That's another tip that people ignore is that, well, it's just potato or it's just a red potato or it's just a sweet potato. It still breaks down. Carrots break down the sugar, right? So we just want to understand that, what happens in our body metabolically. Yeah, and I loved what you said about the protein keeping you satiated, because I think that that is a real big thing for me. I know that I have to work really hard at getting protein because I don't, I don't love it unless it's a great protein. So like, you know, there's certain things like I loved like fresh grilled shrimp, but it has, you know, I'm just so picky and finicky about what I eat, but I have to work really hard at finding proteins that I love. And so, but I read a study that showed that, you know, not only that protein is so filling and it keeps you feeling more full with less food, but that protein reduces your level of hunger because of the hormone ghrelin and it boosts levels of peptide YY, which is a hormone that helps you feel full. So talk a little bit more about that of, of how, you know, like give an example of like, like, what did you eat yesterday for your protein? Yeah. So let me back into this just a second. Um, I want to make sure everyone knows that my views work for me. Um, Everyone has to do and figure out what works for them. I would love to be vegetarian. Chantal, (laughs) I mean, just for so many reasons, I just can't be, um, it does not work for me and any way I try it, no matter how much I do, it doesn't work for my body. And, um, I have, I I think, you know, this, but I have an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid condition, which a lot of women suffer. I do too. Yeah. And, and, and most, a lot of women don't know they're suffering from it. So this is another blind spot we can talk about is making sure you're getting the proper thyroid testing from your doctor. Um, but being an autoimmune person, it works best for me to have a very low anti-inflammatory diet. So I eat a lot of wild game. I eat a lot of grass finished, um, regenerative meat from regenerative farms. Um, I source it from a company called U.S. Meat, U.S. Wellness Meats, and I source my local game here from Idaho Hunters, to be really honest with you. I eat only wild-caught salmon. So yesterday, um, I had farm-fresh eggs for breakfast, or breakfast, right? My first meal, breaking my fast, um, with, with a little bit of avocado. Um, and then I snacked on some Brazil nuts, They're great for magnesium, great for your thyroid, right? Um, and then at dinner, I had literally... Um, an enormous sirloin steak. Um, again, grass finished steak. And for me, foods like that 
um, keep me very satisfied, satiated. They spike my mTOR so that I keep my muscle tone and, and function. My metabolism stays high and my inflammation stays low in my body for my autoimmune condition. Um, I'm extremely sensitive to certain vegetables. I'm, I'm very sensitive to polyunsaturated fats. I try not to eat them at all. Um, so give an example of what that is. Yeah. So and what vegetables are you sensitive to? Um, any, anything like nightshades. So nightshades like tomatoes, um, eggplant, onions, garlic, those are all things that I'm sensitive to. I'm also extremely sensitive to too much cruciferous. I can definitely see a breakdown in how I function. I'm very sensitive to non-organic, um, cow dairy. So I do do goat cheese. Um, I'm very sensitive to all of those things. So polyunsaturated fats, let's, let's talk about this for a minute. So saturated fats were deemed so bad for so long, right? So they've been demonized in our culture for a very long time. And that's all I try to eat with the exception of some nuts in moderation and some avocado, um, sometimes coconut oil also, as long as it's a good source. So most people don't understand that fruit oils, right? And vegetable oils are full of polyunsaturated fats. And they're extremely inflammatory to our systems. Um, so, and they also have a lot of linoleic acid, which is extremely inflammatory as well, which is that high level of omega-6 versus the omega-3. So what's happened to our systems is that we've gotten too far on the side of omega-6s and not enough of the omega-3s. So having that balance with the higher amount of um, omega-3s, which come from your salmon, right? And some of some forms of saturated fat versus the polyunsaturated, which is going to come from a lot of the fruit and uh, vegetable oils. And what people don't understand is that about 60% of the olive oils that are on our shelves, commercially processed in this country are cut with canola or corn. Um, so, so for me, I instruct my clients to get their fat from um, animal sources, real butter um, or ghee, um, those are all very good sources of fat versus dumping a bunch of corn oil or canola oil um, into the pan to cook with. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one -on -one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is gonna really take you to the next level. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to this recent review, a happy coaching client sent in. Thanks so much for your help and guidance. I never could have done it without you. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day, over and over and over again, and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Got it. Okay. So you started, you said, so you had, you started off, let's say you started at 11 or 12 o'clock, depending on when you started eating, you had, you had some eggs. Yeah. So how many eggs would you say you had? Three eggs with ghee. Okay. So, and a little bit of avocado, not a lot, like maybe a quarter of an avocado with a lot. I think of people can get too out of control with avocado totally. too. Totally. I mean, you know, it, it's got a lot of calories and has a lot of fat. And I mean, especially guacamole. I mean, I have to be real careful with guacamole. I could lose my mind on some guacamole before you know it. Three, three whole avocados in, in guacamole. Cause you're like, and dip and dip. And you've just, you have lost your mind on it. I totally understand that. I agree. So, so with, and also those, those eggs that I eat now, and, and I always tell people, if you can't, a lot of people can't afford, and, and I've been in position, believe me, I've been in positions in my life where I can't afford the organic stuff, the pasture eggs, the pasteurized, you know, butter, the, 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 you know, grass finished beef, just buy the best you can. It's better than polyunsaturated fats. Okay. So just buy the best you can. Don't get caught up in the fact that I'm saying it's pasture eggs or, you know, grass finished beef, just buy the best meat you can. Um, so that's another thing too, that women get caught up in. So that was what I had around 11-ish yesterday. Then I had some Brazil nuts, like I said, salted with lots of um, Redmond salt. And then at dinner, Brazil yeah. Brazil nuts are so good for you. I just started really getting into Brazil nuts, but they have just, there's so many great qualities about them. They're amazing. Selenium, magnesium. I mean, they're just. Selenium, powerful. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
And selenium is another key for thyroid issues for women too, that we forget about as well as iodine, right? So those are two things that we need to watch as women too. And then at dinner, yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful um, sirloin steak and that steak had fat on it and that fat was okay. It was, I had a protein ratio of more protein to fat right during my day. And, um, it keeps me super satisfied. And so eating that around five or five 30 last night, you know, I, I haven't eaten yet today. It's what 10 30 my time. So I'll eat after this podcast and then I'll hop on another call. <laughs> so, and then you had that steak. Did you have anything with it or you just ate the steak? Oh, just some bolted greens. So, um, wilted, sauteed spinach, collard, whatever's in my fridge. Typically that was what was in my fridge last night, but it's sauteed in ghee. It's not sauteed in olive oil or canola oil. If you are going to use an oil, what kind of oil are you going to use? I don't have any in my house, but if I did, it would be coconut. Um, and it would be from a really nice, um, virgin coconut kind of oil. That's what I would use. Um, if I were to use it and sometimes I do, my daughter really likes it. She likes coconut products. I've been pulling away from that, just learning more honestly about what works for my autoimmune condition and what works for my health. Because for me, my focus is health, right? It's about, you know, being sharp, uh, being functional, having the energy that I need to serve the people that I want to serve in my life. So if I'm exhausted and run down and you know this Chantel, like better than anybody with this condition, if I can't get off the couch at 3 PM or I can't think clearly, or I'm anxiety ridden from this autoimmune condition, I, I can't show up. And the foods that I choose to eat make me feel good and keep my weight down. <laughs> yeah. So what's another typical lunch that you would have besides eggs? Yeah. For, oh, for breakfast, like the midday. Yeah. The midday meal. Yeah. I love doing um, smoked salmon and avocado. I love doing that as a breakfast with a couple soft boiled eggs and some steamed asparagus. That's another classic breakfast for me. Um, I really love smoked salmon <laughs> and smoked trout, as long as it's from a good source. So that's a, a breakfast that most people don't think about in American culture. But if you look at other cultures that are much healthier than us, it's a very typical breakfast is a smoked fish um, with some soft boiled eggs or some steamed greens is something that I would do also. Um, I used to do a lot more smoothies, you know, but the smoothies are harder for me. I'm sorry, there's a plane. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, the, the smoothies are harder for me right now. For some reason, I go through phases, but I would also do a protein smoothie some days packed with like a little bit of um, greens and some some um, a little bit of avocado and you know a nice almond milk that's you know sugar free that's another breakfast or breaking my fast that I would do <laughs> and do you do you put any fruit in there at all if I do it would be depend on my activity level so when I say that what I mean is if I'm in a situation or a season of really heavy lifting or really intense um, weight training, then I would add berries, but not a banana, but I would add berries because they do have a lot more fiber and they slow down the release of glucose into your system with that fiber. So if you are going to eat fruit, my recommendation is to eat fruit like um, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, things that have a little bit more fiber in them. So let's talk about that. Is, is there ever a time like, like let's talk about in the last two weeks, how much sugar or fruit have you eaten in the last two weeks? None. <laughs> and I, 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 maybe that's extreme for some people. Um, but in the last two weeks, especially none. I've been home a lot and cooking a lot at home. Tonight's probably the first night that my husband and I are going to go out for dinner. And you know what? Tonight I might have a little something, right? I might have a little cheesecake because we're going to my favorite restaurant and I might have, you know, a small slice, but I never go. Yeah. I might do that if I, if it sounds really good to me after dinner. Um, but that's, you know, once or twice a month, Chantal, mm -hmm. that's not because I know what that cheesecake is going to do to me. Mm -hmm. right? It's not that I'm afraid that I'm going to wake up and be, uh, put on weight. So, so much as I'm going to wake up inflamed right. and swollen and my joints will probably hurt and I'll probably have a sick stomach. Right. Right. Um, and I'll probably have low energy because of my thyroid condition, right? Like you understand that more than anybody. So 
<clears throat> those are things I have to weigh, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what do I want to endure? Do I want to endure, um, you know, going through a whole day of not feeling my best? Probably not over one moment of joy and that cheesecake that really, I mean, it's not real fulfillment anyway, is it? I mean, cause usually you're going to beat yourself up over it and that's not fun. So it's like, I have to weigh it, you know, and, and sometimes it's just not worth it to me. And I've it. learned that. I've learned that. And I'm going to be doing a 30 day, no sugar detox, um, with none, nothing, you know, no fruit, no anything for 30 full days. So if you guys want to join me on that, go to chantelrayway.com slash no sugar and join us for that. Cause it's at this point, it's like, there's times where you just need, you, you can get where you can get sugar, sugar, sugar. And then instead of having that sugar, like you said, two times a month or once a week, it's every day you're wanting, you know, something, something sweet at lunch, something sweet at dinner. And it just gets out of control. Yeah. And the thing too, is the, the best women always ask me, how do you control sugar cravings? If you eat enough protein, and you have enough good fat in your diet, it's, it starts to go away and it doesn't happen overnight guys. So when I say this, please listen, it takes time for your body to understand that deep nourishment, but women were so afraid to nourish ourselves with those heavier foods because we've been taught to eat fruit and low fat and all these things for so long that instead of, you know, pushing it out to where you're just nibbling on sugary fruit snacks Nourish yourself once, give yourself good protein, good fat, and see how you feel. Because I guarantee you four hours later, you won't be grabbing for all the stuff in your pantry the way you will if you start your day with a fruit smoothie. I promise mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. So start your fast or break your fast with a very high protein, at least 30 grams of protein. Start your day with that. Start breaking your fast with 30 grams of protein and allow the fats to come in that are healthy, that are not polyunsaturated, that are not full of linoleic acid and see how much that changes your cravings because I guarantee you it will. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to chantelrayway.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own, or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's chantelrayway.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. Let's talk about that continuous glucose monitor. Have you ever worn one of those or bought one and talk about that? And the rates are really going down on the, the price of those that you could get those. And I, we have a couple of women that have done that. They've gotten the continuous glucose monitor and they've really checked it and they've lost a lot of weight just using that as their kind of metrics of making sure their blood sugar stays low. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, I can. I recommend getting, uh, especially if you have metabolic situations going on, especially if you are extremely overweight right now, I think that getting a continuous glucose monitor is really eye-opening because what it will do is it will not only give you continuous feedback, but you'll learn what's right for you, not what is right for me or the, your girlfriend, because we are so metabolically different. We are bio-individuals, right? Our, my insulin levels are completely different than yours, Chantel, depending on what you eat and what I eat. And it's really interesting because even if you get them for your, like you and your husband get them or, you know, you and your significant other get them, you could eat the same thing at the same time. And my blood sugar will do nothing. And my husband's will go through the roof. Right. And then I'll eat something that I think would totally throw off my glucose Right. And, and it doesn't touch it at all. And then other things that I would never think threw off my glucose, like honey for me is no, I cannot have honey. It, my blood sugar does not come back down. It spikes and it stays up, but I can have jasmine rice. I can have, um, I, it, whole wheat doesn't work for me either, but if it's jasmine rice or basmati rice, that works for me for some reason. So it's really interesting if, if you really want good data, 
Getting a continuous glucose monitor is definitely something I would recommend if you are suffering from a health condition right now, um, a metabolic condition that is, you know, that's really affecting your health. That I would definitely make sure you're doing. And get your blood work done, guys. Like get your thyroid, get your thyroid taken regularly, get your hormones taken, go to a naturopath or a functional medicine doctor who can take you out of that bell curve of Western medicine and actually look at what is working and what isn't working for you. And I really recommend women doing that if they're feeling stuck in their weight loss, going to a functional medicine doctor and getting a full panel of your hormones, your thyroid, and all of your mac, mac, micronutrients is vital for you to figuring out what's going to be your solution. Because sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes that's what it is. Yeah. And, and if you go to ChantelRayway.com slash blood work for your thyroid, I put a complete set of la- thyroid lab tests in there. It's nine different tests that you should do because almost all doctors will only test your TSH. And then I put on there what I think what they say the lab range should be. And then I put on there how I feel best on the optimal range of where those numbers should be for every one of those. Um, because you're right. Like, you know, what the, the, cause I see so many people who said, Oh, my doctor tested my TSH. My TSH was at 1.9 and they said I was fine. And that's the only thing they tested. So you need to make sure you're taking that full panel. Absolutely. What else? I couldn't agree more. I could agree more. What else are some blind spots for women where they say they think they're doing this right and they're they're missing the boat? Where else are you seeing that? Overexercise or lack of exercise, one extreme or the other. Um, you know, I'm going to share with you what I think is a really good frame for women. And I, I understand you guys, like I understand this need to constantly work out. Like, believe me, I was a fitness competitor for eight years, right? <laughs> like I get it. <laughs> um, but listen, this is the thing I have since learned that that kind of abuse on your adrenal glands, that kind of cortisol overload can significantly cause you to gain a lot of belly weight especially around your midsection. So right now, if, if you're looking at your body and you're like, why in the heck can I not get rid of this spare tire? Like, or, you know, the muffin top. I guarantee you there's an excessive amount of cortisol in your system. And so I think what happens is we try to out-exercise that muffin top, right? Chantal, it's like, oh, I'll just go to the gym again. <laughs> I'll just run again. I'll just go do another hot yoga class. And that's the exact opposite of what you should be doing. So if your body is in, if your body is holding on to excessive cortisol, you're going to see it around your midsection. So really the best thing for you to do is take a week, take a week. If you're in this position where you're constantly over-exercising and you're doing it daily and you can't seem to get out of that cycle, take a week. I know this is hard and allow yourself that same hour a day, but take yourself outside, put yourself on a walking trail without any noise and walk in nature. It's a game changer. Okay. So number one is take down your exercise. If you feel like you are overtraining, if you're overtired, if you're over sore, if you're not sleeping well, those are all signs of you overtraining. And if you have that little spare tire or big spare tire around your midsection, that's a cortisol spare tire. So that's number one. And what I ask my clients to do is if you haven't exercised before, if you're new to exercise, it's not necessary for weight loss. So people get caught in this, it's, you know, diet and exercise is the answer. It's not, it's diet, (laughs) right? It's absolutely eating at the proper times and what you're putting into your body. So if you're, if you're not exercising at all, I think everyone can benefit from a walk. Everyone can benefit from moving their body. At least I say 12,000 steps a day, not 10,000 to combat our sedentary lifestyle. So, you know, take the time to look at your iPhone and count your steps. And try to get 12,000 steps a day if you're not an exerciser. That's a great place to start. But that exercise is not for your weight loss. Let's be very clear. You don't need to exercise to lose weight. You need to eat right and on the right time and schedule. But exercising is great for stress hormone release, right? It's great to help you sleep better. It'll make you thirstier. All the things that will get you to your goal. So that's how I like to frame that for women. So that is a common mistake is that people aren't moving enough just in daily life 
or they're excessively working out to a point that's actually harming their body. And I will tell you that it's funny that you said that because one of the things I see with women is that the ones that are doing like this intense, like hit workout or high intensity, and it's like just massive, massive workout. But when they change it to where they say, you know, they walk three and a half miles a day, they just, that's going to be their exercise for the day. That is the magic elixir is the walking. Cause somehow I think what happens is they go to the gym and they do this hard intensive workout and then they come home and then in their mind, they're justified to eat this and this, and then they get ravenous and then they eat all this stuff, but doing a three and a half mile walk they don't come home like, oh my gosh, I've got to just eat everything but the kitchen sink. And they are burning those calories. That's bringing their cortisol levels down because they're walking, they're staying calm, they're getting those steps in. So I couldn't agree with you more. I I will tell you for me, when I'm at my lowest weight, I'm walking every day, three and a half miles on an, and it's not like this massive power walk. I'm not like, oh, you know, I'm just going on a nice good pace, three and a half mile walk. And it really keeps my weight right where I need to be. And that's a great, I love that you said that because it's the easiest form of exercise and the best in my opinion, but this is what I've, I've done this. And I think your audience will appreciate this. I've scheduled my days to where I do a lot of sitting these days, right? I'm on podcasts. I'm doing, you know, things on my computer. So in the afternoons, when it's typically nicer where I live, I will schedule all my calls, all my meeting calls, all my client calls, and I will put my little guys in, right? And I will just walk while I talk. And I am telling you, doing your afternoon work on your phone, you can walk five miles and not even realize that you did it. And it's a great way for you to start implementing some movement that will help soothe your system and not aggravate it. So I think that's a really good solution for women too. They, I think that we think that if we don't go to the gym or we don't you know, work out this way that we're not improving our fitness and that's just not true. Um, I call it fitness like snacking, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, get up and go for a five minute walk. Those steps add up. It doesn't have to be all at once either. Like you can go in the morning and walk your dogs around the block and then go at lunch and walk your dogs again. And then the evening after dinner, and it adds up to about three or four miles before you know it. So I think that's another way to look at it too. Don't overwhelm yourself with all or nothing. It can be throughout the day. Okay. So let me recap what we've talked about so far. So one of the reasons is make sure that you are just eating the right amount of food. You're not eating too much. You're not eating too little. We want to go for the Goldilocks method. We want to eat just right. Um, Number two, we want to make sure we're not eating too many carbs and too much high fats at the same time. We want to make sure we're eating enough protein. We want to make sure we're not eating too much sugar, including fruit. Like just get rid of that sugar out of your diet. It's got to be a once in a blue moon type thing. You're having it, not too much. And making sure that with the exercise that you're, you're again, it's not too much. It's not too little. It's just right. And we're not creating too much cortisol. What else? Uh, we d- I did mention in there the importance of water. So I don't want to underestimate. I don't want people to, to poo-poo on that because honestly, drinking your water every day, 80 to 100 ounces for the average woman is necessary, but you've got to make sure you're also getting the proper amount of electrolytes with your water. Otherwise you can still be bloated and not flush because in order to get the hydration into the cell membrane, Chantel, we need that electrolyte to permeate that cell membrane. So if we're lacking the electrolytes, we're not actually hydrating the cell and we're not doing what we need to do for our weight loss goals or our health goals. So water is key also. I don't want to leave that out of the mix. Perfect. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Polyunsaturated fats. Get them out of your life. <laughs> yes. yes. And I want you to, I want you to, to go over that just a little bit more in depth, like a little yeah. practical. So when you say polyunsaturated fats, give give examples that people can relate to of exactly what they need to get rid of. So you're going to want to look at all your labels. Um, this is this is daunting, and it can definitely be a new eye opener for you. But I, 
you know, just, just in your pantry right now, I guarantee you that most of the food in your pantry has polyunsaturated PUFAs, what we like to call them, in, in your pantry. So you're going to turn over your label and you're going to look for soybean oil. You're going to look for canola, cottonseed, peanut, and a lot of our olive oils that we're told are healthy right, are usually, and they're not going to tell you on every label, unless you're ordering it from a very ethical source, usually it has to be out of this country, they're cut with cottonseed and canola. So any vegetable oil, or you're also going to see like on some packaged foods that say they're healthy, you're going to see vegetable oil, right? And that vegetable oil can be a mix of anything. Now, what's really important to remember here, guys, is you can't, a cottonseed doesn't, you can't squeeze it and oil doesn't come out of it, right? <laughs> So it's chemical, there's chemical solvents that are necessary to extract the oil out of these things. So if we're having to use chemical solvents to extract oil out of something that's not meant to be extracted, that's definitely damaging and can damage our cells, which causes inflammation, right? And we know that all of these health scares, all of these things that we're suffering, these diseases in our country are caused by inflammation, right? And, this, and the damaging of the cells. That high amount of omega-6 is not healthy for us. So we need to make sure that we're removing those. And instead, we're putting in the good saturated fats that we were told or used to be, we, we were we used to be told they were bad, but now we're coming to see that they're actually good. Um, so that's number one. The other thing is there, a lot of people don't know, but they're hidden in your salad dressings. They're hidden in your nuts, right? Most people are like, Oh, I'm going to go grab it. And I'm being really healthy. And you are, you're making a great choice, a much better choice. But if you flip it around, I guarantee you the first ingredient is one of these oils. So you just want to be careful about um, the quality of product that you're deciding to use. So yeah, those are my tips. That's funny. Cause my mom she likes to get roasted nuts. And so she's actually the one who taught me that she's like, like she was watching my son and she, I was like, okay, give me a list of everything that you want. And she's like, I want roasted nuts without <laughs> oil. She's like, make sure you look at it. She's like, I want them roasted and I want them salted, but I don't want them roasted in oil. Good job. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's amazing that she's the, got that, you know, discernment, to understand the difference because most of us don't know. And, and, and how are we supposed to know? I mean, things change so much and doing your research and really understanding what's working best for our bodies. And really, if you can just get the inflammation out of your system, that's key. Number one, I mean, that infl those inflammatory responses are, are going to send your metabolism the wrong direction fast. So you're going to get rid of polyunsaturated fats. You want to get rid of soybean oil, cottonseed oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil. And you want to look in your pantry, get rid of those. You want to use instead of oil, you want to use either butter, ghee, coconut oil. What about avocado oil? Avocado oil is better than olive right now. And the reason why is because it's cut less with some of those gnarly oils than olive oil is in our country. But still, just be careful about the quality of avocado oil you're buying. You want to really take note and make sure you're getting it from a good, reputable source. Because sometimes, right, it's a lot easier to just cut it with that corn oil and it's cheaper for the manufacturers. Mm, gotcha. Any other tips? Uh, the only other thing I would add to that is if you're feeling stuck with your weight loss, if you're feeling like um, you know, you're just at a wall, right? You, uh, the other thing you want to really look at is your stress level. Um, you want to look, I know right now in our culture and our society, what's going on is super stressful. So stress again is, is a, a huge killer, right? And it also spikes your cortisol, just like that excessive exercise can do. So, and then that leads to lack of sleep, right? And we know that we need sleep in order to lose weight. So you really want to understand, okay, am I, how am I managing my stress? And if I'm not managing my stress, what can I do? What do I know works for me to bring that down? And for me, it's my walking, right? In nature, that's what works for me. Also earthing works for me where I put my feet on the actual ground and ground myself. That also works for me. Um, meditation works for me, very short, like three to five minute meditations work for me to calm myself down. So that would be the last tip is really manage your own stress levels to make sure you're not spiking your cortisol. Mm, awesome.
I love that. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much for being with us. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Yeah, I love Instagram. I'm kind of a fanatic about it. I'm on there all the time. I post videos all the time. <laughs> um, and it's Jennifer Luddington on Instagram, on Facebook, and that's my website. So it's pretty easy to find me. So tell us, do you have any kind of, I know you, you do such a great job with your groups. Like they are really, really fantastic. So tell us about like the different groups you have and any kind of promotions you have too. Oh, that's so nice, Chantal. Yeah, um, I have a group on Facebook that I love, I adore. It's called The Freedom Project. And, you know, it's not just about weight loss and health and fitness. It's really about freeing your beliefs, like blowing up your beliefs so you don't blow up your life. <laughs> and um, I think that's something that we do as women a lot. We, we get caught in these on our limiting beliefs and we stop ourselves. So my group is really focused on not only health, but also mindset. Um, and then... You know, towards the middle of September, I have a really fun new challenge that I'm going to be launching. It's called the She Ascends um, Challenge. And it's really about finding your own vision and values and what works for your health and your body and your life. And um, we're running a 21-day challenge just for women, women only. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. This has been great. Thank you again. And you guys stay tuned. We have another episode coming up in just a few. And remember, if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantalRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. This has been a Sompronto Media Production.